Hey students, um, today I'm going to try to do something different. I'm going to try to pre-record uh, my lecture. <sighs> May God have mercy on our souls. Let's hope this works. Okay. Uh, all right, so I want to try to pre-record this lecture on double integrals over general regions. Um, there are going to be no Camerons in the room to correct any errors. Uh, there are going to be no Professor Hickerson's in the room to uh, ask philosophical questions. Um, we are on our own. You're on your own. Um, I wish I had planned better. Okay. All right. Enough goofing around. Uh, let's uh, have some fun doing some double integrals over some general regions. Um, the first thing I want to say is like, if I gave you, if I just said, do this integral, integrate from zero to one, this double integral, and from negative square root one minus x squared to positive square root one minus x squared of something like three x y squared d uh, y dx, then uh, I think you could probably just do it just kind of blindly going through like I don't know what I'm doing but okay you like take the inner integral which is write this integral from negative one minus x squared to one minus x squared three x y squared dy and you know kind of using tools from last week you say all right well I guess I'll integrate with respect to y uh so that is going to be uh, x y cubed and now we evaluate at the bounds of integration again it's this one minus x squared and then positive square root one minus x squared and um you know kind of like when we did u substitution last week we got kind of functions as the bounds okay i guess i'll plug it in uh and that's gonna be x times square root 1 minus x squared cubed uh, minus x times minus 1 minus x squared cubed uh, which is uh, I suppose 2x because these you know, this negative sign's getting cubed, so it sticks around. Uh, so I think that this is 2x. Um, and I'm going to write this as 1 minus x squared to the 3 halves. Uh, yeah, and that's what's in my notes. So, okay. And now you got to do the outer integral. Outer integral, which would be the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x 1 minus x squared raised to the 3 halves dx. Uh, and now you're like, how do I do this integral? And honestly, you would just plug it into Wolfram Alpha um, probably as your first check. Um, but uh, I look at this, I'm like, nah, I've taught 252 before. This is a U sub problem. I would choose u equals one minus x squared because I know how to integrate u to the three halves. And I noticed that, oh, the derivative of this inside is right there. Uh, so like, all right, du is minus two x dx. Uh, yeah, all right. So then, uh, ah, but you gotta worry about the bounds of integration. So here our bound x equals zero, that becomes u equals one, because you just plug in zero there. And our upper bound x equals one, that becomes u equals zero. So, all right, we've got now the integral from, oops, not negative. From ah, one to zero of uh, all right. So I'm replacing my two x dx is going to get replaced. So two x dx 
is going to get replaced by, I guess, negative du. So I'll throw that negative sign out there. And then uh, this is u. So this can be u to the 3 halves du. And then uh, I'm going to, since 1 is bigger than 0, I'm going to switch the uh, bounds. But switching the bounds means you got to add a negative sign. So it actually cancels that negative sign. Kind of handy. So 0 to 1, u to 3 halves du and oh blessedly this is not too bad to integrate this is going to be two fifths u to the five halves evaluated from zero to one love evaluating from zero to one oh only things better is evaluating zero to zero and uh that's just going to be two fifths um okay so uh, I think like, all right, it's a pain, but you could do this. But like, what what did we just do? What did we calculate? What, is this the volume of something? What, what did we just do? What did we just do? Uh, yeah, let's figure out what we just did. Uh, okay, so if you recall, uh, last week, we integrated in multiple dimensions. It was very exciting. Uh, and we had like a box in the XY plane and we like had some surface that lived, I don't know, over that box, you know, some surface like that. And, uh, and then we found like the volume under that uh, surface. But uh, what if we wanted to do something like uh, about? What if we wanted to integrate over a circle? You know, maybe we'd have some funky little surface like that over a circle. And maybe we wanted the volume over that. I don't know, can you guys hear my phone blowing up? All right, if I was more practiced at doing this, I probably would have put my phone away before this started. Uh, yeah, or, and like, what about even something crazier? Like, uh, some like, woo, yeah. I mean, let's live a little. <laughs> and then you get some like, I don't know, crazy looking surface happening. Maybe there's some like bumps in it. I don't, not an artist. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I wanted to find the volume under that, apparently. Uh, how do you even do that? Well, let's look at like a test case. Let's say something like, um, let's do some example. Uh, integrate 3xy squared over uh, the semicircle um, if we're in the xy plane. So we're like looking at the, the domain here. Um, let's do this semicircle. Okay. And let's say it's radius one. So what we're doing is we're like in the, uh, you know, in space, we're taking like a semicircle. And this is our base and, uh, and now we've got like a surface lying over it. Um, and we want to, we want to integrate this function on this base. Uh, let's do it first with respect to y. Um, so I'll say, uh, do it first with, uh, hmm, actually, let me, let me say it this way. So like, let's call this, if we call that region R, wait, not, not 
not the real numbers just r actually i think your book calls it d dang you know it's like a bummer when all of these like decisions and mistakes get like immortalized in video uh okay so you like i'm asking you what's the integral over d of 3xy squared da and um I would say let's do first so this should be some in iterated int integral so let's do the iterated integral of 3xy squared dy dx and the real question is what are the bounds on the integrated integrals iterated integrals um well if we're first doing with respect to y that means we are, our x is fixed. So like choose some x in here, that's fixed. And we're changing y, our y values. And if s, x is fixed, then our function three x y squared, just kind of, it's like some constant times y squared. So actually our, um, well, it'll look something like, the function will look something like that. Hmm. Hmm. That could have been better. Uh, so yeah, you do this, you know, when thinking about the iterated integral, it's like, okay, you find the area under, you fix X, you find the area under the curve. And then, uh, and then you kind of like sweep that area like through the region. So yeah, this first integral, this inner integral, don't know the bounds, it's gonna be x, uh, 3xy squared dy. And so yeah, all right, what are our bounds? What are our bounds? Well, the lower, this is the lower bound and this is the upper bound. And the problem is that our bounds depend on what X is. Like this bound is gonna be lower down here than it is if we chose X equals like zero. Then the, um, sorry, the upper bound would be up here, but at X equals one half, it's down here. And if maybe X equals like three quarters, maybe it'd be like down here. And similarly, the lower bound also depends on X. Uh -huh. And so we have to write the bounds as they depend on X. And so uh, this say upper semicircle, we got to like write this as a function of X. And uh, we got this upper semicircle that corresponds to that part there. So how do we write that as a function of X? Ugh, well, all right, this is a little bit of a pain, but um, I guess we know the whole circle, like if we, did all the way around that horse whole circle is x squared plus y squared equals one uh so we get y equals plus or minus square root of one minus x squared and so the top half hmm, now this looks like d is that thing here there there that's d the top half of this region like there that's going to be the y equals positive square root of one minus x squared and then this lower region here that's right here that's going to be the negative one minus x squared and so for the inner integral our bounds should be well, it depends on x, but for fixing x, then the lower bound is minus square root of 1 minus x squared, and the upper bound is positive 1 minus x squared. All right, so what about the outer integral now? Well, we know our in inner integral is this one, minus 1 minus x squared positive one minus x squared, three x y squared dy. 
and now we're integrating with respect to x. Um, but what should we choose for our values of x? Well, OK, let's go back to this picture. We're saying, all right, the upper and lower bounds of y, they depend on x. And now we're asking, all right, and which x values do we even care about? Well, we're starting, because we're looking at the semicircle, we're starting at x value 0. And also, I guess, if we're looking up here, here, the first line that we take, the first like baseline that we take for y, is the one where x equals 0. And then the, so that's like, you know, the one you got up here. Now the last one, okay, it, it's just going to, you're not like really going to have anything, but like in theory, the last one you would take is up here at x equals 1. Um, and there you go. This, this is the, this is what we did before. If I planned this lecture correctly, that's what we did before. Yeah, 0 to 1 uh, in the dx minus uh, square root 1 minus x squared to positive in the dy. Okay, so that's what we did originally. We just kind of were like, I don't know, let me integrate away. And you did, and uh, you got an answer. And so, okay, turns out what you were doing is you were calculating the volume over a semicircle. Um, all right, uh, cool. What about, um, what if we wanted to switch the order of integration on this bad boy? Uh, we say, what if we wanted to switch um, and integrate first with respect to x and then with respect to y? Um, you know, Bubini says we should be able to. Uh, so, okay, can we, if we switch the order, do we just do, I guess, minus 1 minus x squared to positive 1 minus x squared on the outside, 0 to 1 on the inside, 3xy squared dx dy? Is that it? No, no, it's not it. No. Ah, it's a bummer. I wish it was. Here is one reason I know without like looking at any theorems why I know this can't be right. Um, the bounds of integration on the outer integral, these are functions of x, which means if you do this integral, and you plug these in at the end, you're going to get, as the double integral, a function of x. And it's not. It's a volume. It's a number. It should be two-fifths. It shouldn't depend on x. The volume that you get on the end at the end does not depend on x, right? You're supposed to have, like, integrated through x and y, and now nothing depends on x or y. So, all right, you like if you done if you do this, you you like know you're in trouble because you end up with a function of x at the end. Um, yeah, this is a huge bummer. Um, so, how do you change the order of integration? You can't just switch it around like you could when you were in a rectangle. Uh, in fact, I want you to I want you to repeat after me. Um, changing the order of integration is harder than anybody wants. So I'm even going to write it. Because I guess there are no time constraints when you're just <laughs> rolling through a lecture video. You know. uh, changing the order of Integration is harder than anybody wants. That's because everybody wanted to just switch the order like you did on a rectangle. And you can't do it. And it's tempting, but don't do it. Don't do it on the homework, please. Um, okay. So how do you do it? You just have to rethink the problem. And this is like why it's kind of a bummer. Um, 
unless you like thinking and then it's this is great uh yeah so maybe you just think of it as an opportunity so let's let's look at that same example we've got that semicircle in the xy plane or thinking of it here that semicircle and now what we're doing in the uh in like space if we're integrating with respect to x that means we fixed y so i don't know maybe we'll fix y here and now we are this is our line of fixed y and now we're looking at what the function does above that line um and if y is fixed it's just a constant times x so actually it's just gonna kind of Hmm, how to draw this correctly? Draw that. Oh, thanks. It actually was a straight line this time. So this is actually happens to be what the function looks like. Um, it it's this line right here, um, and so the area actually is a is a triangle. Um, but okay, so now you you have this like. This is your line. You want to find the, uh, that's your curve for fixed Y. You want to find the area under the curve. And uh, in order to do that, all right, you got to integrate. So let's do the inner integral. We don't know the bounds yet, but we're integrating 3XY squared now with respect to X first. And so again, our problem is um, actually our lower bound seems like no matter what y we choose, we're starting out at x equals zero on this semicircle. So I guess the lower bound is always going to be zero, uh, but the upper bound is a mystery to us at this point. The upper bound, well, it depends on what y, y value we fixed. If we chose y up here, then we would only integrate up to here. If we chose y down here, we would integrate up to here. Uh, so yeah, so what is, what's that upper bound? Well, we gotta write, I guess, this semicircle as a function of y, since, you know, the height of the semicircle depends on y. And uh, all right, the way we would do that is we would say um, x squared plus y squared equals one. And now we have x be a function of y. So x is gonna be plus or minus square root of one minus y squared. Uh, and it turns out that this right side right here that is going to be x equals the positive one minus y squared um and then this one would be the negative uh. Okay, so actually this is maybe slightly easier uh, because our inner integral has a lower bound of zero and an upper bound of just positive one minus y squared. And now let's figure out what the bounds on the outer integral are. So we write the inner 3xy squared dx. And now we're integrating with respect to y, which means, you know, we're sweeping out this, uh, this area through our y values. And so, uh, all right, what, what, what's the first y value where we're gonna take one of these, um, you know, where we're gonna fix it? And, uh, I think we're gonna, our first y value here is gonna be minus one. That's the first y value where we're gonna start taking slices. And the last y value where we take slices is gonna be one. Uh, 
So there you go. That is uh, that's how you would change the order of integration. You would like go through, you look at your region, and you like write the function as, um, or you write the boundary as a function of either x or y, whichever one you are um, trying to integrate first. And uh, I guess the opposite of what you're integrating first, if you're integrating with respect to x, then the boundary is going to be, you want to write it as a function of y. And then if the bound, if you're integrating with respect to y, you want to write the boundary as a function of x. Um, okay, and then I'm pretty sure in your pre-assignment, um, I'm going to ask you to like check that um, you still get two fifths. And if you don't, check to see whether you made a mistake or I made a mistake. Um, okay, so all right, big picture, pause for a second. What did we do? Um, one, we started by saying, if I just gave you a double integral with the bounds written on there, you could just plug away no new techniques, really. The technique, the new stuff is figuring out what the bounds are if I just gave you a region. And I said, here, the region is a semicircle. Or maybe I say, ah, the region is the area bounded by the function y equals 2 minus x squared and the function y equals x. And maybe I gave you some other thing. Um, and x equals 0, something like that. And you're like, Ugh, okay. And then you gotta like graph those things in the x y plane. And then you gotta say, all right, here's the region I'm integrating over. And then you gotta think, am I where am I taking slices? Where do I want to take slices? Um. So yeah, that's where like that's where the real hassle lies in figuring out the bounds. If I don't give them to you, I only give you a region. Uh, and like honestly, in real life, like in applications. Yeah, no one's like writing a boundary for you. You're like finding it. You're like, oh, okay. Maybe I want to find, uh, I don't know. I'm having, uh, you might naturally want to like find an integral over a circle or over something else where you've got to like think through what you're doing. Like life rarely just hands you, here are the bounds that you want. Um, you got to think through and, and come up with the bounds. So I want to make some like more general comments now. So, um, so I want to say, like, if you are given a general region, uh, how would you choose uh, the order of integration? Um, your book talks about different types of regions. I didn't learn it that way, but that's okay. Um, I think it's kind of helpful. So uh, the first type of region, they say, if we're just looking at the XY plane, as they say, what if you have a region where maybe you have, uh, maybe it's given something like this, where it's, um, you have some, function of x up here so maybe we'll call, i think your book calls it y equals g1 of x and then you've got some function of x down here y equals g2 of x and uh and then your x is just going from a to b or you've got this line x equals a and x equals b in this case it's like oh I have a formula for the upper bound and a formula for the lower bound and then the left and right bound are just numbers this kind of should scream to you like okay i'm gonna like have this be the base um and so i should have my inner integral fix x and integrate with respect to y uh so in this case you want to um, 
say, all right, because you're going to have to like your insight integral has to be bounded by functions. And it's like, if you are given these functions, great. Uh, so this would be you integrate Well, you're starting from G2 of X going to G1 of X up to G1. So that's like the Y values that you're integrating from. And then uh, I guess I'm assuming you have some function F, X, Y. And now you are finding the area under that curve for that fixed X. And then where do you want to take these slices? Well, take your first slice at X equals A and uh, your last slice at X equals B. D, X. And I forget whether your book calls this type one or type two, but it's one of the types is where you just, you've been given a function for an upper and lower bound um, and the left and right bounds are numbers. Uh, another option, maybe the left and right bounds are given as functions of X. So like, I know, you know, you gotta like reorient how you think about it. You like gotta turn your head to the side and you're like, oh yeah, I guess if Y, or maybe this way, if Y was my input, what would my X be? Uh, so maybe this is like, the X values are gonna be some function of Y. Uh, call it H1 of Y. Hmm, I don't like what I did up here, I think. Hmm. Let me find the book because I kind of feel like, did I want to go, maybe the lower one should be called G1, other, upper one G2. Let's see what, let me, I just want me to be consistent with your book. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, team. Very sorry. Let's make that G1 2 1 2. Okay. Now back down to here. All right, the lower one is H1. The upper one is maybe going to be X of H2 of Y. And maybe these Y values, you know, that's going to be, uh, this is maybe we'll call that C and we'll call this D. Here, now it's pretty, you say, all right, well, this these functions I... I know the top and bottom are functions if I if I slice this way. So you want to slice that way. Uh, so your inner integral is going to be from h1 of y to h2 of y. f x y d x, right? Because you've like fixed your y. Now you're changing x, and you want to you're like taking that slice as you're changing x so you, you the change is in x here and then you're integrating from well your first slice should happen at y equals c and your last slice should happen at y equals d so d y um, all right now what if uh what if you have something like Something like that. What? You son of a... Maybe something like that. Where, all right, this is both the, this top upper line, that's, um, here, let's start with the lower line. So this lower line, that's why is gonna be, um, it's definitely a function of X, but if you too, tilt your head. Oh, you could also like rewrite this as a function of y. So you could also write that as x is uh, h1 of y. And similarly up here, you have uh, y is some function of x, or x could be, you could write it as x as a function of y. And so really you could do, go either way. Like you could go from, oh, wow, that was not what I intended. 
Okay, you could go that way. You could start slicing. Uh, you could fix your Y and bury your X's and then slice up and down. Um, yeah, slice that way. Or you could you could slice it in this direction. Like, that's fine too. And now you've got your upper and lower bounds. And uh, how would you choose your outside boundary? Because remember, your outside, the outer in integral, always, always, always the bounds are numbers. So, okay, that's true. Then you're sort of like, well, okay, maybe this is A and B, C and D. So the endpoints, this is another thing that kind of sucks about these problems is sometimes it'll be like, here's G of two and here's G of one. And so I give you the bound, the like functions and I say, oh, integrate over the area in between. And then you've got to find the endpoints. You got to say, all right, well, where does it end? Um, and I mean, here, this point is going to be B, D. And this, uh, yeah, and this point here, I guess, is A, C. So you could either write this you could write this either way you could either do um the no g1 of x g2 of x uh the uh oh wait yeah and then your x's are going from a to b x y d y dx or you could do integrating from h1 of y to h2 of y, and then from c to d of f, x, y, d, x, d, y. And, uh, and then what about if you uh, had something even crazier? So here it doesn't matter. Either way is fine. But what if you wanted to do something, uh, yeah, a little wackier, and uh, maybe you had some region that was like, whoop, mm, and then maybe it was like, uh, wah, and then uh, something like that. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Was thinking something fun like oh I should have I should have been more creative like well what if you had a function that looked like what if you wanted to integrate over that function this is more fun um in the xy plane all right sorry easier but not more as interesting um what you got to do is a real pain is you just got to break this up into regions that you know how to do. So you got to, so like if I were doing this, I might say, well, okay, if I stop here, then this is like my region one. And all right, I've got an upper and a lower function. And so I would like integrate this by slicing this way and then sweeping forward. And then uh, here, all right, maybe now this is region two. I Now I've got like a function, this is a function of y and this is a function of, uh, of y also. But notice like we, um, eh, I guess we could, nah, I would, this is how I'd do it. it. This is more of an art than a science and I would slice this way and sweep up um ooh, ooh, except that maybe there's some issue there so maybe i'd have to have like another region here i don't know here let's let's draw it let's pretend that it didn't swoop up at all there we go if i do this what's going to happen Um, so yeah, I do that. Um, 
here. Uh, yeah, let's, all right, let's draw it so that our lives are a little bit easier. No, this is looking less and less like pi. This is just looking terrible, um, but okay. I would do it that way. Maybe this would be my third region. Ugh, and then you'd have like, I think I'd have to break it up here because this is going to be like a line and a line, line and a line. Maybe this would be like region four. Maybe this would be region five. This would be region six. And it seems like either, like four, five, and six, I could integrate either way. Why did I bring that four out? Let's put it in there. And then uh, this region eight. And eight, it seems like it matters again. And um, I would integrate this way so I don't have to bring it, break, I would slice it that way so I didn't have to break it up anymore. Uh, yeah, so pray you don't get a problem like that. And, um, I guess if you were uh, doing something where I said like, oh, um, like maybe maybe in class I'll ask you to do something like integrate over region between uh, the lines y equals x and y equals uh, 2 minus x squared. How would you do that? The, my first step is I would say, I would draw it and be like, okay, well, here's y equals x. And then 2 minus x squared is minus x squared, but shifted up 2. So it's going to look something like that. I would integrate first with respect to y, but you got to find these endpoints. Um, so this is uh, y equals 2 minus x squared. So I were just setting up an integral of f x y. I do it first with dy, then to dx. My y values are going from x to 2 minus x squared. But then what are my x values going to? Um, well, I got to find where these two things meet. Um, and so that's really where, where does the line y equals x? Where is that equal to 2 minus x squared? That's the question. Uh, and so, all right, um, I want to find where these two are equal. So I will, uh, yeah, I'll move all this over. That's, I'm asking when is x squared plus x minus two equal to zero. Um, and let's see, can this easily be factored? Uh, all right, well, I know if x is one, then, I mean, I just kind of like saw that. Like if this, this point here is definitely at the point one, one. Can we like guess what this point down here is or is it gonna be something bad? Uh, it's like if we have x plus one, x minus two, oh, bummer. I feel like this might not be as nice. Let's see. Mm. This can be, okay, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula and oh my God, this is gonna be really embarrassing if this could have just been factored. But uh, okay, we're here, let's do this. Um, here, let me just try one more time. What if X is negative? Uh, okay, no, so all right, quadratic formula. To find the roots of this polynomial are, um, okay, let's minus b plus minus, uh, is it just square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a? Is that right? Or is there a factor there? God. Uh, you, this is where you know how much I hate memorizing. It's like, I've taught this so many times and I never remember. Uh, if this is right, then this would be minus one plus or minus square root of one minus four times one 
times minus two plus eight. Oh, over two. That's gonna be nice. So it's minus one plus or minus square root of nine. I know what that is. So it's gonna be minus one plus or minus three over two. Uh, so it's gonna be minus uh, four. Oh God, dang it. Over two. which is minus two, which was easy, or it's gonna be two over two. Wow, why didn't I, I don't know what was wrong with my brain here. So like, apparently this could have been factored as x minus two, x plus one, or sorry, x plus two, x minus one. Oh my God, of course. All right, well, everyone who like saw this immediately, you are vindicated. All right, so then our x value is minus two, and since it's on the line y equals x, the y value is also minus two. Oh my God. Okay, so now you're integrating from y equals minus two to one. Well, that was a marathon. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. And uh, yeah, we'll do some practice problems in class. Um, all right, I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs>